Hello everyone, I'm Colin Cadet. Today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that don't work. They're not unsafe, they just don't work. And I'm going to show you why. And the reason I want to do this is because <laughs> hopefully we'll stop some of these myths that keep perpetuating. So let's have a look at some of these. This test is on the table saw and I'm using an 80 tooth blade and what I've seen a lot lately is uh, people claiming that if you put tape on top of the wood when you're cutting with your table saw you'll get a better cut and <laughs> a table saw blade cuts first on the top so the very best cut with the table saw is on top of your wood and underneath where the blade exits the wood is where you get the tear out so if you're going to put tape anywhere you would put it underneath but tape doesn't make any difference we've already done those tests and I'm going to do it again this time on top and you're going to be able to see the difference so I'm going to do two things I'm going to put a zero and the zero means that there's no tape and then I'm going to put a one next to it and we'll cut through that one and we'll make a show, show the difference of what that looks like. Okay, and there's those two cuts, and if you look, you can see on this one, there's some, if I put it in the right, you can see that there's some very tiny little, and that's normal, little tiny little splinters on there. So that's what that cut looks like. Now let's take the tape off. And if you look at the tape here, Look at this, it's pulling the fibers off the wood. Okay, there's the difference. There's, I've cut right through my one, you can barely see a little mark of it there, but there's the difference. There's with tape right there, and there's without tape. And actually, in this case, you're actually getting a cleaner cut without tape than with tape. So this whole tape thing on top of the wood on a table saw is just, uh, it's just a myth. I've been seeing this more frequently as well, and that people making uh, inserts, zero clearance inserts for their miter saw. And with a miter saw, the blade cuts underneath first. That's the first. On the table saw, it cuts on top first. So when it cuts underneath first, that's the best cut you can get. And anybody who's ever laid um, hardwood floor will tell you that when you're cutting hardwood floor, you put the good side down because that's where you get the best cut and you'll get tear out in the top. And that's exactly the same thing that you'll hear from any carpenter. They'll always tell you with a circular saw, because they work, these tools work both the same way. They dig under like this under the wood. Circular saw, the, if the best cut is when you put the face, the good face down, that's where you get the best cut. So making a zero clearance uh, shouldn't make any difference at all. And we're going to prove that by taking, I'm going to take these right out and take them right out of there so there's no inserts at all. Then the second cut I'm going to make, I'm going to put in the very best zero clearance you can get. I'm actually going to lay a thin piece of plywood there uh, and that will give you the best zero clearance you can get. So we'll have a look at those. Okay, you can see I've removed the insert altogether. I'm going to put a zero. Uh, let me see. No, I'm, maybe I'll make a, I'll make a two this time and a three. So the two is going to be with nothing 
and the three will be with using the ultimate zero clearance. Now there's nothing unsafe about this. You can see that the blade doesn't bottom out anywhere um, and whether you've got the inserts here or not wouldn't make any difference because it's always set so that it won't do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the first cut. Now remember we've got the same piece of wood and we've got the same blade. Okay, I'm going to do the zero clearance uh, and do that first and then we'll compare the results. So I'm just going to lay that off to the side. Now the ultimate zero clearance fence is a piece of plywood because it makes it perfect. Uh, it's exactly perfectly tight. So we'll use that for our zero clearance. We'll make that second cut. Okay, there's the other one, and we'll compare those. Okay, there's our results from the miter cut. And remember we had two, two was the first one. Now, you're looking at right now the worst part of the cut. This is where tear out will occur with a circular saw or with a sliding miter saw. So, um, but we're not really looking at this, but still it's a very, very nice clean cuts. So let's flip this over if I can without disturbing. There we go. Okay, now here's the first cut that I made and that was with no insert at all. That was like wide open and look at that beautiful, crisp, clean. Uh, there's, there's no tear out there at all. And, and here, this is interesting. Here's with the zero clearance, using the plywood as a zero clearance, the perfect zero clearance you can get. And look, at there's, I don't know if you can see, but there's actually a little bit of tear out in there. Oddly enough, the zero clearance is actually worse, which is unusual. I would have thought it would be exactly the same, but um, and that could be the wood. But the point is, there's almost no difference between either one of those. They're both very clean, which proves the point that zero clearance on the miter saw is just, there's no point to it. The next thing I want to talk about is bandsaw blades. And there is a myth um, from many, many years ago that you should round over the back of your bandsaw blades so that you're able to get a tighter cut when you're cutting circles or arcs. And the way you do that typically is with a coarse stone like this, you run the bandsaw and you do a little bit on each side of just, of course, just the back. And if this is a bandsaw blade and I sort of cut it in half and I'm showing you the top of where I cut that in half and these are the teeth down here. Basically all you're rounding off is this little bit here and that little bit there. Now I used to do that for years and years and after a while I never saw any scientific evidence that I was making any kind of a difference. And if anybody knows of anything, we'd all learn from that. But in the meantime, that's not something that you're going to benefit from. In fact, the best way to save your bandsaw blades is to buy at least two blades. Have one thick blade and one thin blade. The thick blade is for ripping and resawing, and the very thin blade is for only cutting circles and arcs. Now, the problem with a big thick blade, I, I've done it and I've seen other people try and do it, is cutting circles and arcs. And what happens when you do that is you compromise the teeth on one side or another. You force them into the wood. And what happens when these, all these blades are just steel, there's no carbide in these blades. When you do that, you force the blades into the wood. It heats up the very tips of the blades on one side or the other, wherever you're uh, making that arc. And at the very tips, because there's not very much steel at the very tip of a tooth on a bandsaw blade, those blades, those teeth heat up so much sometimes that they start to melt and that's what makes them dull. And when you touch a blade like that, you can actually feel, if you take a moment, you can actually feel that the hook, that 
part of the tooth that sort of grabs the wood on one side or the other is it the, it's not the same it doesn't grab your your skin as much and what that means is that bandsaw blade is dull and the way you can test that is when you're pushing wood through when you're pushing wood through if you with a brand new blade you'll notice that you can always push wood straight through that's because both sides of the teeth are sharp if you have to put your wood at a bit of an angle to get a straight line that means one side of those uh, bandsaw blade teeth are dull it's a dull teeth one side or the other now you'll it'll still cut wood but it won't cut wood straight so if you want to save money on bandsaw blades here's what you do you get yourself a wide blade this is three quarter you could be using five eighths you could be using half inch whatever your bandsaw takes but then get another very thin blade uh, and this is a quarter inch this blade I only ever use now for cutting circles and arcs and that's what it's designed to do it's a very thin blade and it cuts them easily this one is only for ripping and for resawing and I only ever take do wood through it um, straight straight through I never try and cut arcs so take a moment to change blades when you need to and you can get away in a lot of cases you can get away with just two blades your blades will last you a lot longer you'll save time and you'll save money and all you have to do is make sure that you change blades and you'll never have to worry about grinding down the back of your bandsaw blades this is such an old myth many years ago when we had NICAD batteries we used to have to put a, a clamp on the drill so that you could drain the battery and rejuvenate with these new lithium-ion batteries you don't have to worry about draining your battery just recharge it and use it as you normally would well that concludes my video for today um, and that's some of the myths that have perpetuated themselves in woodworking for years and years and years um, and some of the things that you can do to save time and money in the workshop I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web thanks for watching